Hiya, it's me, Jana Rose, and I just wanted to share with you today about my text-based evidence center. So, <clears throat> I mentioned this before in my stations video and in another video, and I said I'd do one, so this is that video. And I just did a PD for my um, whole school where they had me actually teach other teachers how to incorporate text-based evidence in a really easy way using sentence stems and I do this with my ELL kids and I do this with my mainstream kids. So I'm going to show you today. First of all, I'm going to give you an example of what one of my kids is able to do given their homework on vocabulary. They were able to apply this and they do it there as well and I'm able to take grade from this because it's informational text, it's answering the question and it's doing it within a proper format. Here we go. According to the text, Josh left his campsite to wash his hands. That sounds amazing. That is a clear answer. It's referring back to the text. It's restating the question. That's what we want. So another one that they wrote is, the author mentioned Josh was wearing a cap and a short sleeved shirt. To the point, and I like that. So um, these text-based evidence um, pieces here, I use our National Geographic um, books. So <clears throat> these come in, uh, let me pull my little station up for you. So these come in green and red. I, the green I call for good readers, the red I call for great readers. And I'm able to do both levels in my mixed classroom. Next year I'm just gonna be doing the green. I'm gonna be taking the green from another classroom too because they're uh, increasing our ELL class sizes and all class sizes at my school. So I'll need more of these green ones. Anyways, they give you really great informational text. If you don't have it from here, I would use Newsella, that's N-E-W-S-E-L-A dot com. And I would use their kind of pieces and, you know, questions from that or things from anywhere, informational text. Um, so here it says water for life and they have different questions. So this first one says like, why are floods on the Mississippi River both good and bad? And what my students are able to do is use these two papers behind them. Okay, um, they have this one in their notebook as well. So it says, I'm hitting all sorts of stuff. Um, Text-based evidence transition words. Based on what I read, according to the text, it was stated that the author mentioned that on page blank, the text stated that means don't put a comma after the phrase. That's what the ellipses means. Just continue writing. I changed this to be a semicolon in the future just for any of my grammar freaks out there. This is just two post-its put here to cover up that because I'm only having him do two sentences. This is good for, let's say you did an essay or something. Um, anyways, or actually this is good if you're doing a whole paragraph. Um, anyways, this is for the second sentence. For example, for instance, so on and so forth. So anyways, if I didn't say that word enough already, <laughs> Like I said, I've been talking a lot doing this same lesson a couple different times with different groups of teachers for three questions at least. Um, that's what they want to do in the book. So the first sentence, you highlight your starter. So based on what I read. And I would just put that down on a piece of paper. So the only thing I have to give is line paper. I'm going to write number one here, based on what I read. And then it says... Now restate and answer the question. So the question said, why are floods on the Mississippi River both good and bad? I would say based on what I read, floods on the Mississippi River are both good and bad because. So we really push the word because a lot. And then, then we would answer it using information from the text and paraphrasing. Okay, I would definitely teach this. Um, a bunch of times as a class first and really train them on how to do it confidently. Don't just expect them to know how to do it because you told them once. You really should take a couple weeks because a skill like this you can push to last all year. These Nat Geos, I do a new book every week over here in the station. So it's a constant station. The only thing I have to do is swap out the books and give some more lined paper. It's really easy for such a good center, and this is the only center I actually grade. All the others I recycle. 
So um, it's good independent work for them, and they, it's where they're growing. But this one I actually grade. And so that's nice. The second sentence is going to start with, I really push for example or for instance at first. And so they're going to highlight that elaboration. And I have highlighters here in <clears throat> the little bucket. And it says nine highlighters. And there's nine highlighters in there. Um, and it says provide an example to back up or prove your answer. So, for example, and then they would work to dive in even deeper into the text so that way they can um, make sure to answer the question better. Uh, they want to make sure they're staying on the same topic as their first sentence. Always thinking about the same question. The first sentence just restates in a quick answer, like the ones I read to you before. That was a first sentence one. Then the second sentence has the elaboration for vocabulary. Those are really short articles. Only have them do the first sentence for those. There's not enough information to go into elaborations for that. <clears throat> For this station, you'd have them do only three questions, two sentences each. It's a six-point um, little grade that you got there. So hopefully this helps you. Really, for my ELLs, even if I had <clears throat> those pre-emergence or monolinguals or something, I would still push for transition words. I think that you can make those work for you with summary, with sequence, no matter what they're working on, um, introducing new words. I give them those picture cards, but they should still be here's how I start my sentence, I need to restate my question, then I need to answer it. The second sentence, I can talk more about it, okay? Maybe they do less sentences, maybe they do, like I said, sequencing or summarizing, but you can differentiate for them, train them. Once you get the whole group doing this, work with the others in a small group. Pull them aside, okay, pre-emergence, but you're not gonna call them that. Say, so and so and so, come on this way, um, or right on the board. Like I have <clears throat> where I have like numbers, all my students have numbers and you can tell them where to go and you can say, okay, this group is going to see me at my table today. These ones are going to go to this area, these other areas. All right. Have a great one. Um,